if you walk into St. Ignatius and to the left, uh, there's this big blank white wall. And for years, what I've wanted to do is put, uh, like every month, a, a huge piece of artwork there. Uh, but really for about two years, I haven't got it done because like, I have this much things I want to get done and this much time. But um, do you remember like those banners that we hang for uh, Easter? They're actually not banners. We just printed them off on uh, a laser printer, a huge laser printer, and you can have that done to any artwork. And so once we did that, I was like, oh, I could put that on that wall at St. Ignatius. And every month when the kids come in, expose them to um, some different, you know, Catholic piece of artwork. And the one I wanted to put up for November, and by the way, I was thinking about doing it in that wall out there, just really never get it done, is this one by Fra Angelico. And Fra Angelico was a monk um, who, Italian monk, uh, lived in this monastery of uh, San Marcos. And I had never heard of him when I really got ordained. Um, and after I was ordained, uh, this monk and I took this trip through Italy. And when we're in, uh, oh, wait, did I say, Flo yeah, it's Florence. Um, he says, well, we have to go to the monastery of San Marcos. So I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Uh, holy cow. He was this great medieval uh, master artist. And what he did, it's kind of interesting. In every of the monk's cell, he actually on one wall painted a masterpiece. And in the masterpiece, he would put whosoever was in that cell in the masterpiece. So like um, in one cell, we walked in, there's a picture of the crucifixion, except imagine this, picture of the crucifixion, and let's say it's Sue Chapman's cell. Um, there at the foot of the cross would be Sue Chapman, probably holding a, a brown saintly dog because she loves dogs. Um, and if you're the, the monk, you would uh, wake up every morning trying to see yourself that that picture is a reality now. Love that picture. Then we went to another cell, and this was my all-time favorite, is this picture of actually the first reading of heaven. And so you have this view of heaven, and there's this cloudy border. And when you look at heaven, in the center of heaven is the Lamb of God. There's a Virgin Mary, and all these people are laughing and dancing and celebrating. And then you have on the very edges of the, where the cloud is, you have all these saints, and they're reaching out. And so reach out your hand like you're... They're reaching out, and they're pulling various monks in. Except the monks were actu actual monks of that monastery. So in this picture, imagine somebody like Teresa Lowney getting pulled in by Catherine of Siena or Jordan Peter, Jordan Peterson. Jordan Bastarachea is being pulled in by uh, St. Ig Ignatius or um, po possibly way, way down the line, Deacon Ralph being pulled in by, um, I don't know, somebody. But the idea is that that's a reality, and I just love how art, that's a reality that we live in now. That all those in heaven, they're in the great feast of the Lamb of God, but it does say in the book of Revelation, their prayers are reaching out, pulling us into heaven. And I love this idea that we live in this communion. Uh, we're praying for them. They're praying for us. And all of us are in this one act of worshiping God. That their prayers are pulling us into heaven. I love the fact that we live in this mystical communion. Not just with each other here, but with the entire church. Even the church in heaven we live in union with them, and they're drawing us closer and closer to the great feast of the new Jerusalem, heaven. And, like, I love, um, uh, I love that psalm. There's one psalm that says, um, uh, you were, like, I'm, I'm going to update it. You were born in Montana, and you were born in Nevada, and you were born in Minnesota, but in you was born Jerusalem. I love that. And we believe that by baptism. In us is born the new Jerusalem, heaven. We might have been born all over the world, but in us 
is born this communion with all those in heaven. And the other thing I'd really like to do if I had time was write a book of all the various stories of 28 years of priest, 29 years of priesthood of um, parishioners who had encounters with the saints. Like, um, typically, I have to admit, most of them is when somebody's about to die, so, so often they see the dead. Parents and grandparents and sisters and brothers. We do live in this mystical communion. Um, and just like the artwork was trying to explain that, that we see the world, that we live in union with them. And I love this feast because it's a great gift that God gives us. Um, I think it's so sad, not meaning to be insulting, but so much Protestant theology is just me and, me and God. Uh, that's all there is. And no offense, Protestant theology doesn't believe it, that... Uh, the communion of saints, that we live in this mystical communion. Uh, to me, that's sad because it's so small that life is just me and God. We'd say, no, in us is born the new Jerusalem. Through God, we live in this great mystical communion, that all those in heaven and us, we live in this bond of love by the Holy Spirit that can never be broken. We want to see the reality now is that they're pulling us into heaven with their prayers as well. Um, and so for this great feast of our union with all those who have died, all we can do is thank God. This is the reality that we live in. And so together, please stand and let us profess our prayers.